Ooh, he finished early. I want to start now. I want to cheat. My first slide could be... Okay, here we go. So it's the future. Uh, computers are everywhere. Google made a computer that you can wear on your face. Um, so it, it occurs to somebody at least once in their life, you know, I should really learn how to code. You know, they're like, I really need to learn how to write a computer program. So they get a book and they get motivated and they encounter something that looks like this and they think, wow, this sucks. And they give up. And they go get a beer and they go back to watching Netflix and life moves on. Uh, but it's the future, so um, we can solve this problem and we did. It's something called processing. Um, yeah, fuck yeah. Sorry, cursing. Um, you go download it at processing.org. It's a uh, 501c3 foundation. When you download, please donate. All the money goes to good use. Uh, it was started in uh, the late 90s at the MIT Media Lab by John Medea. Uh, it was called Design by Numbers, and two of his students uh, carried it on into processing as we know it today. Uh, processing is super important because it teaches, you know, it lets you teach programming fundamentals uh, in a visual uh, in a visual way, you learn to code by making really cool art. Um, and it's real world industrial strength programming stuff. It's Java, this is not a toy. It's beginner friendly, but it's not a toy. So here's some examples of some really cool art made with processing. Uh, this is two portraits by one of my favorite artists, Sergio Alback. Um, this is art made with a computer program. It's art made with processing. He uh, sets up some initial parameters and in algorithms he designs, does all the heavy lifting in terms of drawing shapes. Uh, processing also does really cool data visualization stuff. This is a um, project by J.R. Thorpe called Just Landed. You know, when you tweet, you know, PDX to LAX, uh, he went out and mined all this information and graphed all of the people's uh, airport uh, trips. This is a piece that I did. It's, the, uh, it's a visualization of the genome of the mitochondrial DNA of brewer's yeast. I downloaded processing, or downloaded the genome and loaded it into processing. And, Drew some circles. Here's some more stuff with circles coming up. It's the logo of the company I work for, Urban Airship. Woo. Um, this is a simple algorithm called circle packing. Um, it just, it's an image approximation of the logo for my company. I'm sure my marketing people are cringing. It's just totally off-brand. Uh, this is another piece uh, that I did. Uh, it's overlapping circles. It approximates an image of kind of a weird turtle being cleaned by these weird fish. So let's get started. You're getting my three-hour processing workshop in about 200 seconds. So download processing and run it. And then type this in. You type in hello world or print hello world semicolon. Why semicolon? Because you have to. It's syntax. Learn to love it. So you type this in. You press the run button and hello world comes out the bottom and you're a programmer. Congratulations. So let's make a window and let's put some stuff in it. So you type in the size function uh, and you give it a width and a height and you want to draw an ellipse, which is just a circle. You put in the X and Y coordinate of the center and you can draw a line on top of it by you know the beginning coordinate, the top left, down to the bottom right. Black and white's kind of boring, so let's give it some color, the fill and stroke functions, um, except the values for the red, green, and blue uh, of the color. You see kind of a pattern here. There's a function name, and you feed it some arguments. Uh, every function kind of takes a specific set of arguments. You can find a list of all of them on processing.org. This is super ugly. This is a loop. This is how you do something more than once without typing it more than once. So all the code inside the curly brackets gets run the specified number of times I print out uh, the number of the index. Um, so let's use that. This is actually 255 circles that are getting smaller as the loop progresses, but getting more and more blue. Um, provides this really nice gradient effect. Next is kind of the same thing, except it's uh, a line sweeping across the screen, starting at the bottom corner and moving over uh, from zero to width. Width is a variable provided to you by processing because you specified it in the size function. It's super handy. So, so far we've done a bunch of like kind of really rigid um, and structured things, but let's talk about something important with programming, randomness. Uh, let's do something that's not so structured, but still kind of within our control. So here's, this is great, yeah. Here's this, the same loop from before, um, except we're gonna create a random number in the loop by calling the random function. It's random, zero to 100, and I do the same thing. I print out the numbers uh, that are generated. Uh, you'll see here uh, the word float, that means that the number has a decimal place in it, the integer above it, i is a whole number. So let's use this uh, to do something kind of cool. Um, 
we set random numbers for the, you know, the position of the circle and the size of the circle and the color of the circle. We draw a thousand of them. You could put in 10,000, 100 million, uh, some pretty cool effects. So this is really simple. And it's important that you learn how to do this because it's the future and you need to be able to speak the language of the future, which is computer code. Uh, you can go from being just kind of a simple consumer of digital media, clicking like on Facebook, to making stuff that people click like on Facebook. So yeah, good deal, thank you.